She's April. And she's Molly. <laughs> and we are the book besties. Yes, absolutely. Because I don't know which book we're on. Damn it, Goodreads. Please give us half stars. If you are a Judy that's not a fucking Judy, I'm sorry. But the Judys that are fucking Judys, you know what you fucking are. Ah, hello, June. It's Drew Barrymore. While fuck all is doing their best. That's all we are is fancy like Applebee's. You're here. Oh my gosh. You're freaking here. Did you, did you miss me a little bit? Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> Besides the fact that you are my best friend and we have been friends for a significant amount of time for two yeah. years, I have spent every week with you in this virtual, At least for five minutes. <laughs> this virtual recording space where we've, uh, we've filmed episodes, but also you're right. We do have business meetings in this virtual platform as well, since yeah. we're in different um, places, but uh, how are you? Miserable, but that's not the problem. The problem is Calvert County's ER. Oh gosh, we're putting them. Well, we're putting them under the bus. I will we're putting you on blast. Put them on blast. I've been there three times. The last time I stormed out in a wheelchair. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's just crazy <laughs> to me because there are people that are there in search of drugs, and you are the opposite. There was a girl getting a pregnancy test before me what? when I was there. Are you Stomach kidding flus. me? No, they were going in order of arrival. I came in on an ambulance. Oh my gosh. I came in on an ambulance. They forced me out of the gurney into a wheelchair, even though I told them that I couldn't sit upright because the pain was so excruciating. And the lady's like, I have nowhere to put you. You have to go into a chair since you're stable. Wow. And it just got worse from there. Oh. Wow. But we found an excellent surgeon. His nurse practitioner got me in on hey. next Monday. MRI, uh, next Tuesday, my MRIs are t Friday and Monday. Things are turning up rosy. We just. Yeah. yeah. But I, I do have a thing. I'm not fully prepared. Oh, yeah. You had how many fucking weeks off and you come in not prepared today? How dare you? My bell's a wall. Oh, gosh. Where is your bell? <laughs> Matt was tired of me getting up to yell for somebody in the house. Oh, yeah. So um, he retrieved my bell from in here. And I mean, um, you have a phone. Why didn't you just call everyone for help? Because my husband and my children leave their phones constantly on silent. Don't because you guys of have their like, lives outside have, of the house? Don't you have like and, robots in your house that you can page? No. Oh, we have robots in our house. Oh, no. The only Alexa I can't device say it because we, we have one in the room that I'm in right now. Oh, we use, we have the Echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have the dog. And I, yeah, and I don't have the dot or anything like that. Mm. We just have the Echo mm. and um, like the big family center one. Mm -hmm. I got it to replace my daily calendar. Gotcha. But I, I switched that over to Ziggy because the TV says Alexa a lot. So we have three dots and we also, our TV is a fire TV. So yeah, we have a fire TV we can too. But talk to the boys wherever they are in the house. But she's a bitch. I'm sorry. My fire TV sucks. Yeah, but no, that sucked. It sucked. The year sucked. But well, if you I if you need a upright. bell ring, I can ring for you because I have mine. Oh, I also have there's going to be some. If you decide that you want this instead. That's how I feel 24-7 right now. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, hey, so this week, everybody, we are talking about this book, The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. And I picked this week, this book for this week specifically because this week is National Library Week in the United States. What? And I am a librarian, so I'm going to... No, not, you're gonna, a librarian? Yeah. I'm going to nerd it up. And we're going to do a library, like, love episode. episode. <laughs> okay. Let's support do local libraries. Love libraries. Support local libraries. We at Book Besties use our local libraries. I actually get uh, local libraries that are not libraries where I work as well. So um, supporting libraries 
is important. Seriously. All of them. Yeah, which is basically what this book is about. So would you like a synopsis? Yes, absolutely. Because I don't know which book we're on. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Molly, the last chance right, 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 library. Right. Right. The, the chick that never leaves her house. Got it. We're on it. <laughs> There's your synopsis. The chick that never leaves her house. Okay, before I uh, do this, I'm going to take these off because I have a feeling Tom's going to be mad that I'm making noise. So give me just one second. <laughs> Got it. I was working today, so I was fancy. Oh, I didn't even hear them. Fancy like Applebee's. Um, all right. <laughs> That's all we are, is fancy like Applebee's. Yes. Okay, Judy. Okay, Judy. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. You knew I was going to get it in there. You knew I'd get it in. <laughs> okay. It's a lovely last, uh, like, uh, inside joke. Just just know, Molly. Uh, and it will always be an inside joke. Yes. That is ours, not yours. Right. <laughs> Which I'm sure they enjoy hearing us say inside jokes that they can't be a part of. <laughs> you know anyway. who's going to love it? Katie. Katie is going to be pissing her pants listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give a synopsis. You know, welcome back, but also fuck you. Respectfully, fuck you. <laughs> there you go. It doesn't count if you don't say it respectfully. <laughs> All right, The Last Chance Library follows library assistant June Jones and a ragtag group of library patrons. Fuck that name. June Jones, really? I didn't bell, even bell, finish bell, the bell, first bell, bell. motherfucking sentence. I've been alone in a bed for weeks. Well, I'm going to need you to dial back just a little for me so I can finish a sentence, please. Finish the sentence already. I'm not making a <laughs> paragraph. I'm starting over. The you Last Chance over. Library follows library assistant June Jones and a ragtag group of library patrons in a small town uh, um, of the small town in Chalcot. I think is how you said the name. Uh, when That's the how it sounded, Chalcot. Okay, I, I read a lot the, like chocolate uh, yeah, well, in the it. audiobook. Uh, when their library becomes in danger of being shut down due to budget cuts, the friends of the Chalcott Library or Fockle. They, it sounds like Fuckle. Fuckle pronounced Fuckle. Fuckle in, in their accent. Formed. Fuckle. While Fuckle is doing their best to save the, their beloved library, June is on the outside. Um, Looking in. June is on the outside. <laughs> Where I guess that's the end of the sentence, April. Gosh. <laughs> June, who has a laundry list of personal drama, including the death of her mother, her complete solitude, her lack of a relationship, and pr a pretty freaking terrible boss, is told she is not allowed to help the cause or she will lose her job. When it becomes too much for June to ignore, she joins an occupation with one of her favorite library patrons, an elderly man named Stanley. June and Stanley are joined, joined by the cantankerous old woman named Mrs. Brandsworth, a teenager named Chantal, and a precocious boy named Jackson. While the group makes the core, while this group makes up the core group of Fuckle um, and the occupation, the entire village gets involved, including solicitor Alex, who also June fancies. Honestly, this story has so many moving parts, it might just be easier to, like, jump into the discussion. So if, We might as well. If you're okay with that, I'm going to just... Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good choice. Good right. choice. So, oh. I, first, I picked this book because, well, I think I came across it on books, uh, Goodreads or, or Book Talk or something. Um, but it's, uh, I picked this book because it's National Library Week in the U.S., so I'm not it sure... sure what the National Library Week is in other countries, but it is here in the U.S. National Library Week. Um, this book actually takes place in the U.K., but the premise of this love of libraries is still very relevant. Yeah. Um, every year, libraries across really the world are closed due to funding, and as a librarian, I um, I take this seriously because it's my job. Um, I take it personal, too. I, yeah. They're telling you your job's not relevant anymore. That's rude. Yeah. You, you are um, you are Mrs. Brandsworth. You're just a little young yet to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Give you... As uh, you know very well, I will put up a voice. <laughs> 30, in 30 years, you're Mrs. Brandsworth. Um, Facts. So uh, 
yeah, so every year libraries are closed because of budget cuts. There's a lot of censorship happening right now um, and community opposition closes libraries. Um, but libraries are meant to be places for everyone. So mm -hmm. with that said, what did you think of the representation of libraries in this book? I think it's a great representation of what a small town library is. Yeah. It definitely made me think of my hometown library in Nichols back where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Nichols is, it's really fascinating. And I'm actually going to, I'll share a link to the Katie Library in the okay. uh, stories because it's the school. So Katie, the Katie family was a local doctor. Mm -hmm. And when he passed, he donated his home to the town so that they could have a library since the town of Nichols didn't have a library. Gotcha. And so they refurbished the building. They left the structure of the house and each room is just different parts. Like they turned the sitting porch into the children's area. So it's all this beautiful bright light and mm -hmm. curt and it's just beautiful. And it's in this house. And I love that they've had to make a lot of, there's been several times where they've had to consider closing it. I don't think it's open very often now. Mm -hmm. Like it, the doors are just closed constantly. Yeah, that happens. Because like, it's just, it's a staple and it's a historical place, but mm -hmm. they can't in good conscience close it because of it being, you know, so right. historical, but also they don't have the money for it. Right. And I lost my train of thought. What was the question? I'm sorry. How did you think, what did you think of the representation of libraries? Well, okay. So it definitely is a great representation of small town libraries, I would think. Yeah. It definitely made me nostalgic for my little nook. I used to love sitting in, in the yeah. YA section where I would just go and pull out all the breast new books and see if I wanted to read any of them before I put them back. And yeah, yeah it really reminded me of that. I could definitely smell the Katie library in my memory. Um. A lot of it reminds me of the library where I work now. I'll come back to that um, in a second, though. Um, what I liked about the representation is that you had people from all different walks of life. Yeah. Um, because I think I hear a lot. Um, <clears throat> you're a librarian. Like, what? Why, do people even use libraries anymore? And um, mm -hmm. they actually do that, say that in the book. They talk about, well, why don't just people use Amazon? Well, not everybody can afford Amazon. <laughs> like, yeah. We are very privileged to have these shelves of books behind right. us. Like, that's this a, that's a sign privilege. of privilege. Yeah. This is privilege. Like, right. this shows that I have had money at one point in time enough mm -hmm. to splurge right. on this. But right. I share these. This isn't. Right. Molly is a lending library. Right. If you know Molly, you know I will share my books with you. I'm yeah, 100%. I yeah, you have back. to come back. Um, yeah, so for me, like I grew up in a small town, and so you know I was a part of using our community library, but I didn't realize the impact that libraries really had until I mm -hmm. became a librarian and saw um, a lot of the job is like being a social worker. I mean, you yeah. are you know really engaging with the public who are at their worst and I'm not going to give yeah. away all the stories because they're people's personal stories and like it's not my story they're private tell. lives right yeah but what I will say is the library where I am now is situated in a in a really unique area um it's very close to a, a, a wealthy suburb mm -hmm. a middle class suburb and a very poor community as well and we do so Houston well, I mean, Houston has that. Think, of, think about Galveston. Think about Galveston County. Right. Yeah. You know, well, like. But what I, we actually have a lot of patrons who come into our library who have um, housing insecurities. So they don't mm -hmm. have housing. Um, and we see them from open to close. You know, it's a very much like yeah. Stanley in this book. Um but you did remind me of something. So the Helen Hall Library, which is in League City, which we both lived in League City. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Helen Hall. I'll shout. I'll, well, I'll link we're gonna them link below the, because gonna we link love them. Instagram below because oh, all they're of them on funny. Instagram is talk. They're and children's it, TikTok, librarians. They're hilarious. Yeah. Their children's librarians are like really creating some amazing social media content, and I'm constantly commenting on their stuff. I really like it. But when and they're getting the teens involved, which yeah, I love. Right. When I lived there, it was pre the renovation that they went through, so they were smaller, mm-hmm. and they've been renovated, and they've they're bigger in size now. Um, but oh, I'm, it's huge. I'm so impressed with the stuff that they're doing there and having been part of that community. So yeah, I think this book represented libraries really well. I think it's a reality. Mm-hmm. It's not a reality in every library. There are no. very shiny suburb libraries that um, they don't see homeless patrons. They see people who right. come in for programs and they can buy all their own books. They don't need to come to the library to borrow books. They're choosing that. Um, right. Uh, but I've actually never been fortunate to work in one of those places. <laughs> I, I choose libraries that need, they need good people, you know. We're in a different tax bracket than those libraries. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're Applebee's. <laughs> We're fancy like Applebee's. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. Okay. June, June's story is kind of all over the place. Um, she's a loner because she's still grieving her mom. It's been like eight years since her mom passed. Um, she's lacking any sort of confidence in her life. She has hit a routine that is like basically stagnant. She does the same thing every week. Um, but the community of library users actually sees her as a hero. Yeah. So what did you think of June? Oh, poor June. She was a broken little girl. So broken. She was a broken little baby. And... Mm-hmm. It was really sad. She had no family. She had Mm -hmm. nothing. And the loss of her mom really put her on track to just become agoraphobic and just be trapped in that house the rest of her life. Yeah. And honestly, she needed that library shutting down. Yeah. I'm not saying libraries need to shut down. She needed something to force her. She needed her. She needed her life to change. Yeah. And the only way her life was going to change was tragedy. Right. Unfortunately. I mean, she had already job, experienced losing her tragedy. Home. She needed to right. do. She just. Yeah. It, she there needed was, something she else to shift that focus. Yeah. She was just turning into this monotonous, yes. you know, mm-hmm. OCD style. Yeah. Person. It was very Sheldon Cooper, right? We're mm-hmm. going to eat this on Monday. We're going to eat this on Tuesday. We're going to eat this on Wednesday. I read she this only book. ate frozen fucking lasagnas for dinner. Except when she went to the Chinese shop, the takeaway shop. Which is on Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> Mondays is Chinese takeaway. And yeah. she didn't even, when and she, she only first ate ordered, the one meal there. She never tried anything She ordered, else. she always ordered her mom's dish. Mm-hmm. She never thought about herself. She was still ordering food for her mom. Yeah. She didn't, she donated her mom's clothes, but her mom's stuff was still in the house. Like it's Literally her mom's house. everything. Built. It was her mom's house. She was house still living. She was living there. Mm-hmm. She was living in her childhood bedroom still yep. instead of the master bedroom, which probably had its own ensuite. Probably. Like, she is just stuck in this little lane. Yeah. And it, it, it was so sad and heartbreaking. I mean, everybody needs to agree with their own pace, but like June needed someone to like give her a kick in the ass, which is what yeah. ended up happening. Um, yeah. So I've met people like her, not in the stuck in the rut stage, but people mm-hmm. like her who are library assistants who are like, I'm not making a difference. I'm just a library assistant. I'm not a librarian. Yeah. And I see this a lot being that I run a department. So I will have people in my own department say, oh, maybe we should ask the librarian. She would know better than me. And I'm like, you guys have been doing this for as long as I have. You know the things. Right. Have some confidence. Answer the question. If you really get stuck, yeah, absolutely get the librarian. You are so capable. And totally being a capable. librarian, like, a lot of people don't know this, so I'm going to tell people who are who are unsure how library structure works. You actually peek do, behind the curtain, if you may. Right. <laughs> you actually need a master's degree to be a librarian. The master's is either in library science or library and information sciences. I have library and information sciences. There's no real difference. They just kind of rebranded the program, and so that's what it is now because Mm -hmm. there's more technology involved in librarianship now than there ever was. And so that's where the information sciences come in. Um, It's 
information sciences is research, it's technology, it's mm -hmm. anything that you use to get information. Um, you do not need a master's degree to work in a library. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. many libraries hire high schoolers um, to yeah. do shelving. They're called pages. The pages shelve the books. Um, we don't have pages at my particular library, although my local library does. But we take teen volunteers, and it's a great opportunity that's, for them. That's what Calvert's doing, is they take uh, – it's in Maryland, to volunteer, you have to be 16 and older. Mm-hmm. So all their summer intern, they call them summer internships. Yeah. But we have, because Calvert's so drawn out, the main libraries in Prince Frederick, but all our little sub towns have our own little small house size yeah. building. That's a library. So right. we have a small library right here. Yeah. They'll get two high schoolers, another little library will get, and they get like enough high schoolers throughout the County that, the kids yeah. that want to do it get to do it. And it's sometimes great. and sometimes uh, libraries have paid internships for high schoolers um, that yeah. they get grants for. Um, and it's like a summer work position. Program, yeah. Um, well, Maryland but, requires community service. So I'm sure it goes, you know, for graduation. So I'm sure lot, it goes towards that. A lot of places do require community service. We, can, we mm -hmm. require it here in Virginia as well. Um, and even if we didn't require it, volunteering at libraries is such a great opportunity for your kids because we will write letters of recommendation for them for college and for like mm -hmm. big, big kid jobs. <laughs> so um, we've had quite a few kids that come to us for recommendations. Actually, we just filled one out yesterday. So that's awesome. Um, so anyway, I, I, I feel like I know June. I just felt like there was too much to her story. Like, yeah. I feel like focus on but, one thing she lost her mom did we really need the story of the fact that she's a virgin and that she's never kissed anyone no, and bing, she's bing, 20, bing, 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 26 bing. or 28 whatever Eight. it was 28 like did we really it's, it's never been that? it's never been kissed it's it's drew barrymore right we didn't need all of that we didn't need the fact that she we could have assumed every you didn't Saturday. have to tell us right you didn't have to tell us she was a virgin we definitely got that Dude, everybody was, that is so unkind because if I know, you I'm a listen jerk to the episode that i did with tom i was a virgin I, know. I met him i know i, I know you were a virgin i'm sorry i wasn't trying to be cruel i'm just saying the way they described her and the way they were putting on it was leading up to that yeah. like the you know the her the way she was towards alex the way yeah. she was towards people in general she you know like when her neighbor her aunt makeshift aunt i wasn't trying to be rude i really want you to know that i did not want to hurt your feelings you did not I hurt was, my feelings <laughs> i did not want to hurt your feelings i'm sorry i wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings here <laughs> you did I, not I, hurt my feelings it was more of it was very apparent because of the way she was written yeah. Right. The aunt was constantly like, ooh, any boys? And she's like always changing the subject. It's just very apparent she was very uncomfortable with any kind of emotional relationship. Yeah, I just I, romantic. I, I I don't I don't ever make an assumption of somebody's sexual orientation or something. I assume like, everything. I'm a jerk. I, <laughs> I I can say that I am guilty of heteronormative assumptions like i definitely assume more people are are hetero until they Great. tell me that they're not and and that's a fault i'm trying to work on but i don't assume people's uh, like sexual contact like i don't uh, who's sexual oh, no. i don't know i don't know I, I i assume always you have to come out to me as straight if you don't tell me you're straight i'm assuming you're a part of the alphabet mafia hey, molly yeah i'm straight thank you I was concerned there for a bit. Okay. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, you're so you're so lonely. I, you don't have anybody, you know? I am an ally, though. I am an ally. I know. I know. I know. I just That's the only, it. you know, you know what's wild is they threw so many cliches in the book. So this book, and, many. And that was the one cliche they didn't throw in there. Like, why? I was waiting for them to be like, oh, the teen that comes there for yes, um, guidance the is also gay. It you know the what old I mean? lady. But, Mrs. Yeah. Brands, Brands, what's her name? Brands Worth? Branson or whatever. Brands, Brands Worth was a lesbian. Yeah. Uh, but okay, they assumed the way, she was a lesbian. No, she definitely was. She talked about being in love and having a partner who died. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. Um, you're right. Uh, so, yeah, there there was that. But everything in here was cliche. I, I, right. Oh, yeah. The thing is, 
here's my issue with this book and i'm gonna jump ahead and just tell you what my rating was in goodreads i i rated it four stars in goodreads but with a true three and a half rating because damn it goodreads please give us a half stars like why can't you do a half stars it's 20 okay first of all first of all hashtag not sponsored right secondly good goodreads and audible we need to talk the three of us we need to get together and have a conversation yes. because we can help you guys. Yeah. Because there's like just stuff you're not like, doing. Goodreads just like revamped their website. And I was like, and nobody that you consulted, like the actual members that you consulted, none of them were like, we need half stars. Bullshit. Bullshit. Half- Goodreads, we got, we, we have a lot. We've been reading and reviewing books a long time. Mm-hmm. Like a long time. Mm-hmm. And like, babe. Come on. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I. I, I, <laughs> I love it. that there was like no words, but you knew exactly what I meant. <laughs> yes. So I gave it three and a half stars, but gave it four because I think my issue was that I was not in the space, headspace to read this book. Like, it's such a cute story. It's, cute. it's such a it's community cute. driven story. There's that part at the end where Jackson has the name tag on that says, um, volunteer children's library and i'm just like i literally went oh that's so cute because like i am a children's librarian um so like there's things like that that like really stuck out to me but like right now i have just read so many books over the oh yeah your brain's just it i between our our pod reading schedule and reading for our upcoming annapolis book festival um and And work and for work i'm in charge of our battle the books program so i've been reading books for that as well my brain was just wanting a smut break <laughs> like it's I book out want, it's booked out I did not want this but yeah. I do think that if I reread this book that it would be a four star for me oh um, I think it's oh, it's a solid three and a half for me honestly yeah like this book is a very cute slice of life it feels like a Gilmore Girls episode yeah yeah I agree uh I agree. If I watched this as a Gilmore this is Girls the, episode. This is the bookstore. This is the library in Stars Hollow. Which, by the 100%. way, they never talk about the library in Stars Hollow. There's a bookstore. They never go to the library. Yeah. Because okay, Roy used to good. borrow them from Stars Hollow High. Because they didn't mm. have a library. Because they only had the high school. Mm. All right. Uh, so we're set up to believe from Jump that Marjorie, who is June's boss... Um, in the librarian, she's the librarian for the library. Um, that she's on the pl- in on the plot to close the library. Um, she's a terrible boss who forces June to like do personal favors for her. Like, yeah, that's really ucky. The hen party thing was a big problem. Um, ucky. But uh, were you surprised by Marjorie's character development in this book? I don't like her. I don't even. I didn't even yeah. like her at the end when she was helping. Yeah, she's I, still I, a stupid. Yeah, I, I didn't. I used the word to describe her to my husband because mm. I don't like her that much. Like mm. that's how much of a hate I have for this woman. She's literally she's a fucking filling, Judy. <laughs> she's a fucking Judy. Listen, okay, listen, okay. So Judy, okay. So this Judy, this, <laughs> this fucking Judy is named Judy. Marjorie. <laughs> okay, so this fucking Judy, okay, this fucking Judy is in the job of the girl's dead mother. Dude, you're she is literally <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. She is literally. I am so mad about this. She is literally filling the role of her mother. Mm-hmm. And what does she do to this child? Mm-hmm. What does she do to this child? Yeah. She treats her like garbage. Yeah. A servant. It's yeah. fucking awful. She does not deserve she, no redemption for Judy. Mm. No fucking redemption for Judy. For Judy, whose name is Marjorie. <laughs> no, she's a fucking Judy. And I'm sorry to the Judys that are not fucking Judys. If you are a Judy that's not a fucking Judy, I'm sorry. But the Judys that are fucking Judys, you know what you fucking are. What really bothered me the most was the hen party that she made her go to to, like, make her stop the stripper. Like, Mm -hmm. for to me, that, like, I needed June to stand up to Marjorie she couldn't. And she couldn't. And it she really, couldn't. it made me feel really icky. Really icky. Well, and that's the point, right? Right. 
But it doesn't surprise me that her husband ended up being a sleazeball. Oh, no. But what surprised me is that she didn't know that her husband was a sleazeball. That also surprised me because I 100% thought. That's thought. She's retired what surprised in December. Me. She didn't give a fuck. Right. That's what I thought it was. She's retiring. She doesn't fucking care. It's not her library after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Alex and June. Was this romance story necessary? This is the most unnecessary romance story ever. No, you need to slam that bitch. Slam that bitch. Yes. Yeah. Break that hoe. It but needs one of these, too. Yes. <laughs> she could have just had a platonic male friend. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? Mm. It, you, you taunted us with a mm-hmm. little smut. You made there us think no we smut. might get. They kissed. You gave us a hint of maybe some sort of romantic incline. Mm-hmm. And you didn't lead into it, my guy. Mm-hmm. And the whole miscommunication. It's a no for of- me, dog. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> the whole miscommunication of this woman who was his roommate. It's just all nonsense. Yeah, bullshit flag. Um, Like, it was very clear they liked each other. Just be fucking grown-ups and tell each other that you like each other. Stupid. 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 And I like a miscommunication trope. It's actually one of oh, my yeah, favorite I tropes. I don't mind it. I don't mind I it. love the I love the tomfoolery of it. You know? I feel like it's necessary. When you are reading any sort of romance novel and they don't have anything that breaks them up that like causes a, a angst in their relationship, then it's not a real relationship. I'm not saying that every couple breaks up, but you do need some trials and tribulations. It can't just be all sunshine and fucking rainbows. Because that's not life. That's not life. And if you have questions about what I'm talking about, go listen to the bonus episode that was posted on our YouTube on Saturday because I interviewed Nicole Sodoma, who wrote the book, Please Don't Say You're Sorry. She's a divorce attorney. And that's one of the things that we talk about is like, you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. I cannot wait to meet her, by the way. Oh, I'm she very excited. She seems so interesting. I know. And we're going to meet her this week, Molly, like in a couple of days. I know. I was like, I was, when I was review- watching the episode back, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, oh, I would have asked this. Ooh, I would have asked Sorry. this there. Ooh. No, babe, you wouldn't. How would you know Molly Brain? How would you know Molly Brain? I, I don't know. I've known Molly Brain since 2009. And that's still really hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would apologize, but I'm not supposed to do that anymore. Our new friend told me that. <laughs> don't say, please don't say you're sorry. Um, yeah, I uh, I don't expect you to apologize. It's just when I introduce you to people, I apologize for you. <laughs> this is my best friend, Molly. No, Molly. I apologize I'm in sorry. advance. <laughs> I'm sorry. When, um, when I first started meeting Hillary's friends and Hillary started meeting my friends, friends like mm-hmm. we were getting to look you know you know that stage of friendship mm-hmm. where we're like so hillary was like okay my friend tina's coming over and she's you but she's not you mm-hmm. and i go okay mm-hmm. and she goes and i gave this same speech to tina mm-hmm. and i go okay and like that whole night like during that party they everybody was just kind of watching tina and i to see what <laughs> Are you talking about uh, Hillary, my best friend, who doesn't get, who's not your best friend anymore? We kicked yeah. out the group. Okay. Yeah, that Hillary. that Hillary. Yeah. Tina and I got along really well. Tina and I are friends still today. <laughs> we were extremely loud that evening. Though. Well, you were still friends with your mutual friend. Unlike us, we were introduced by a mutual friend and we do not friend her anymore. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Stanley. Um, we learned that Stanley was homeless. Um, previously in his life and he's essentially still like squatting on a piece of land in a a derelict trailer Um, Stanley's story was the most interesting to me what were your thoughts on him I thought they were going to make it her father I thought they were going to make Stanley her father I thought she was going to log on I thought she was going to log on to it just was another unnecessary story. He has a son in the States. Yeah, well, to me, the most unbelievable part of this book was that their anonymous donor turned out to be his son from the U.S. And he comes and, like, 
make sure Marjorie gets a that to me was like that was the most unbelievable part. Yeah. Um like I that was actually so thought I actually thought Stanley's story up until that point was very representative of like of library patrons. Oh yes, um, it was. It was a very realistic story. Yeah. I had no problem. I liked him as a character, but I really thought the way she was writing this. I really thought we were going to get that aha moment. Like yeah. I was with my dad the whole time. <laughs> I, I you know? had a thought at one point that that would be the case, and I'm really glad it didn't go that way because I feel like that's totally unbelievable. Um, yeah. But what I liked about Stanley, um, like, e- even though it is a little cliche that he dies and, like, gives his money and then she's able to, like, save the life, sort of save the library. Mm-hmm. Like, even though that's a little cliche, I think his story had, like, the most beginning and end. Like, it was most bookended. Like, yeah, it, he starts out as the guy that arrives at the library every day and at the opening and leaves at closing. He uses the computer and he can't y- surf without help um i just thought that I mean, she funny. memorized his password for yeah. him which by the way this is my big my big absolutely fucking not for this book as oh librarians boy. we are not allowed to access your personal information so we are not allowed to know your passwords we are not allowed to log into accounts for you at all hmm. and if we do that we have violated like our like laws as librarians yeah um, and you can be fired. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do don't that. Do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You hear April? Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. When don't. that happened in the book, I was like, oh, absolutely not. And then I read it to like my library assistant and she was like, we can't do that. And I was like, I know. <laughs> so um, anyway, she helps him use the computer. He does the right. crossword puzzle. He's not really much of a reader, but he is there every day. When he decided to do the occupation, when he was the first to do that, I 100% thought this man's going to die. Yep. The, the, it, the, yep. Him being know, trying to get not, in contact with his son and him like be, not being afraid to be arrested. Yep. I was like, his life is over. Like He's, he's dying. Right. I go, he's dying. Yeah, That's the I first thing that. I said in my head. He's dying. But I like the story yep. of who he was, that libraries mattered to him because that was always a place to feel safe. And without giving away this person's personal story, we recently had a patron come in mm-hmm. who um, was had not been in a library since since they were a kid. And that was a place that they felt was safe. So they came to right. us in a time of crisis. And to me... That is what we're there for. We are a place where you can come and we are safe. And we have... You're the safe harbor in the storm. Libraries are the only place where you can go and just stay the whole day without having to spend any money. You are not trespassing inside the building of the library. Because it's everybody's building. (laughs) Which that does happen. Um, But I I liked Stanley's story because to me he felt very believable and relatable. I liked him. Yeah. A hundred percent. All right. So did you have a favorite character? Mine was not Stanley. I had a different one. Mm. I don't know. Not really. I mean. There were a lot of characters. Belle. I have a Belle moment about her name. Like that's like June Jones. June Jones. June fucking Jones. Really? That's her name. June Jones. Do you know who June Jones is in comics? No. <laughs> that is her isn't, name, June Jones. Isn't June Jones the name of the... No, that's April. Damn. I'm getting my mind mixed up. I don't know. Because there used to be a comic named June Jones. I don't know, but stop naming your kids after months. It's just not good. Uh... I don't know what I'm thinking of. I don't know where I it came from. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel, yeah, it's I don't like know. the April, May thing. It um, didn't work. It just, yeah. it felt like a throwaway name. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, out of all this meticulous thing you did in detail, you, yeah. you couldn't get creative for five seconds? Yeah. I get uh, it. I, 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 I like Mrs. Bransworth, Mrs. B. My favorite thing about her is that she never liked a book. It didn't matter what the book was. This I, felt, I related to her. As, as someone that says that a lot as a uh, profession now. Yes, we do this. Now. I relate to her very much. 
<laughs> she came. I out. loved. She I love when she hated Harry Potter. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> when she came in and started yelling at the woman that was an immigrant. And she's like, you don't want that. Like, you, you know, and she's getting all yeah. pissed and yelling at her. And I was like, no, that was you, Vera. You? That was Vera. Vera. Yeah. 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 I and Vera we thought too. Vera was. For, first, she's like totally racist. And then she ends up helping the woman. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, Mrs. B on page 302. She comes in, slaps the book on the counter and says, what complete and utter shit this is. June looked across to see Mrs. Bransworth marching through the door, waving a copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone here in the U.S. It's a load of overprivileged kids and a bit of magic. Absolute crap. Ah, hello, June. (laughs) Ah, hello, June. I was just like... (laughs) She's my favorite. I liked how she called out Stanley's sister during the yeah. funeral. Like, he was a good guy. Nobody's, you know. I didn't get that. Her just storming out in the middle of her brother's well, funeral made We don't no know what their relationship was like, but we do know that his wife left him and took their son because he was an alcoholic. So we don't know. Right. We don't know what their relationship was like, but I'm going to assume that he probably wasn't the best brother when he was an addict. Right. But here's the thing. I'm not going to my birth father's funeral. Mm -hmm. He was an addict. I cut him out of my life. He's Mm -hmm. staying out of my life. He's no longer welcome in my life. This is my life. I mean, because of without him, you know what I mean? Right. So when his time is to go have fun, hasta luego. Good for you. You know what I mean? Like if you're truly that angry, like I am that angry, you don't show up at the yeah. end. If she I don't wanted, know. If she, wa- if she showed up because she wanted a resolution of some sort, she wanted to feel something about her brother. Mm-hmm. And it didn't give her the answers she wanted, you know? She probably wanted to be proven right about her brother that no one cared about him and no one would show up. Right. But then all these people did and she was like, well. What know, the fuck? Exactly. Yeah. All right, so although this book clocked in in 322 pages, like, it felt much longer to me. Like, what are your thoughts on that? It did feel longer. Yeah. It felt like the story, I think it was the pacing of the book. Yeah. While the story works well Mm -hmm. as a whole, the pacing was off. So you'd have high peaks in areas you wouldn't expect high peaks, low peaks where you would, it just, it was a very much this instead of the gradual rise and flow of a book and it made it more of a staccato read that's what i think made it feel so long and i feel like she missed an opportunity to tell the story from everyone's point of view i was thinking the same thing i was waiting for another voice to come i was like okay when's the next character coming when's the next character coming when's the next character i want to get the point of view of all of fockle Fuckle. So it should have been either June and everyone's POVs mm-hmm. or third person. Yes, absolutely. I think seeing from June's point of view, I didn't have sympathy for June. No, I, I it didn't was more either. of a, it was more of a, oh, honey. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, like, I feel like if you did like June's point of view, Stanley's point of view, you would get a totally unreliable narrator with Stanley, which would be great because you wouldn't know the truth about what's going on with him. Um, right. Do which would B. make it so drastically different right. and so drastically more interesting. You could do Mrs. B or Vera. You might get a more interesting story from Vera, who was more of a minor character. Chantal's story. Like, I just feel like there was more there. Alex, you could even done Alex. I don't feel feel like Alex would have been the character to pull the story together because he had too many ties to different characters. Yeah. That you would know things that wouldn't have made a surprise ending. Makes sense. So, but I, I like my big complaint is that there wasn't a focus in this book. And then I'm saying that the better idea would have been to focus on more characters. So I don't know that I'm right, but. But I don't know. The book I'm listening to now has too many characters. I have no Too many. I finished it like an hour ago. I have no comment on that. Okay, then. We'll talk about it next week. Um, Next week. (laughs) All right. So so what do you think of the ending? Was it cliche, unlikely, a solid ending? I, it fit. Yeah. It fit. It was predictable, but I liked it. Exactly. 
it wrapped it up nice. It was, this is how I want the slice of life book to be. Yeah. This is exact. It feels yeah. like a episode of television or a full movie in yeah. one read. Yeah. And that's what I got. Yeah. It was a little long, but. Yeah. I'm yeah, grasping at straws I, I, now. I totally you know? agree with you. What'd you say? I'm grasping at straws, you know, when it comes yeah. to complaining about stuff outside of that. I, I, I totally agree with you. I thought the ending, them not actually getting the library the way that they wanted it, but getting it a different mm-hmm. way, it felt predictable, but I really liked it. I really yeah. liked it. I thought it was really great that Mrs. B talked about how a, a library isn't run by the community. Like, you need a librarian. I just shout out to Freya Sampson for, for writing that into her book because yes, a library is made up of many staff and they all are equally important, but there is a finesse that comes with the specialty of librarian. And there are people that are, that would be like, I can't believe this actually, my husband said this our first day. I can't believe you need a master's degree to put books on the shelf. Like that's not what we do. (laughs) Um, So I was really happy to see that like, librarian was taken seriously Mm -hmm. um so yeah so i don't have a last question here i just want to say that i want this book to be a movie i actually think it would work better as a movie than it did as a book i was thinking the same exact thing i could picture these people molly to me i want maggie smith to play mrs b 100 percent maggie smith to come on up and as mrs b throw in books like what is this shit um, I want June to be either Florence Pugh or Emma Watson. You know how much I love Florence Pugh. I love oh, her. no. I was picturing Amelia Clark for June. Oh, she would be good, too. She might be a little too old, though. She's a little bit older, mm-hmm. but I, I was hearing That's Amelia Clark. That's a good Clark. one. I was seeing, I was it's, seeing it's, Amelia it's Clark. her playing Lou in and Maybe for you. Oh, yes. Exactly what I was picturing. That's 100% what it is. Yes, yes. She's Lou from me before you. Yeah, yeah. I want Helena Bottom Carter to play Marjorie. I think she would be the best snarky boss. Like, I just think she'd be great. And I I want to see. Huh? I want Feeney for the old guy. Oh, I was going to say, well, he's American. He's not British, but um, Sir Ian McKellen for uh, Stanley. I got to int- I got to explain And if he doesn't rules. at one point say none shall pass you shall not pass shall not during pass. the occupation, I'm gonna just burn the whole thing down. <laughs> I got to introduce the girls to Ian McKe- Sir Ian McKellen and explain why he's so important to nerd culture, him and Patrick Stewart. So important. And They're not, so important to nerd culture. Not just nerd culture, but like the niche subsect of nerd culture that is LGBTQ nerd culture. Yes. Like, like the it's just important. It's important. So. And if you don't know what we're talking about, I'll put a couple links, but go do some research. Patrick Stewart literally kissed Ian McKellen on mm-hmm. live television one day mm-hmm. because yeah. people were freaking about, out about Ian AIDS coming, in the coming UK. Out. Yeah. 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 They were losing their shit. And yeah. he's like, he's still my best friend. What the fuck is your problem, people? Yeah. Big old smacker on the lips. And Patrick Stewart, Mr. Pa- Sir, Mr. Patrick Stewart there, he's straighter than straight. He has yeah, many yeah. wives. Yeah. Yeah. And they are fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> he has said had some smoking women. Anyway, that's the second point. <laughs> well, that's all I got, Molly. That's all I, I got. Have nothing else. Um, I should go lay down. <laughs> well, before you do, this is the last episode for April. So can I go through what we're going to do in May? Guess what? I can see you soon. Oh my gosh. So before I go through the book list for May, for those of you who are new to listening to the pod, Molly and I have been friends since 2009. We have not seen each other in person since Since you transferred. No, we came back and saw you one time. Oh, right. Yeah, you guys came to visit. I think it was 2011. No, sorry. No, No, I was in Paraly. We We were in the City House. Um, it was uh, in the League City House, so it was fourteen. It or was I, it was 15. either fourteen or fifteen. It was James was like eighteen months old, I think. Yeah, he might have been two already. I'm not totally sure. He wasn't but, two yet. But we have not seen each other in person since then. We currently live four hours from each other, and we still have not been able to see each other no. in person. No, um, because we suck, both so of us. And you and Katie are going to meet in person for the first time. This group chat that's been popping off for two years, two motherfucking years. Is it? I, how many? T- I don't know how many times I've had to explain to my mom who Katie is. Right. My mom knows you. You've met my mother, yeah. and 
I still have to explain to her. And she's like, who is she? I go, she's my internet friend, but she's not an internet friend. I swear. She's a real person that, that April went to school with. Like, she, she's not going to murder well, me. I swear, April mommy. hasn't seen her in person <laughs> since 2000. So. Like, you know she's not going to go, er, 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 on well, us, right? Listen, if she did murder us, she would make it look like an accident. She's a nurse practitioner. <laughs> she could kill us and no one would know. <laughs> At least do it fast, Katie. I'm tired. <laughs> All right. On that note, I'm going to go through the <laughs> books for May. So we're going to kick off May with this book, American Royals by uh, Catherine McGee. This is a YA book. It's the first book in a series. The final book of the series comes out this year, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with, so. with Royal American Royals. Then the second week in May, we're not going to do a normal traditional book episode. We will be posting... Uh, a combined episode of the live streams that we'll be doing from Annapolis Book Festival this week on I'm Saturday, so April 29th. We will be interviewing I six authors. Oh my gosh. I can't, no I can't deal. even, I can't even. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. No Our editor, Tom, who is also my very handsome husband, um, will be there as well. And so you can meet him. You can also meet our friend, Nurse Katie, who will be passing out stickers that are like Book Bestie. This is our first merch, guys. So, and it's free. So you can get Book Bestie merch. Um, so we have. Just gotta that. find Katie or. Just gotta Tom. find Katie or one of us. We'll all have on. Uh, blue t-shirts with our logo so i don't know how much i'm gonna be walking around but <laughs> he, he won't be if he want uh molly we'll park her outside briefly <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we will roll her in a chair towards you <laughs> so that episode will actually go live on may 9th then on may 16th we're gonna do this book crazy rich asians by kevin kwan i have this is my second reading of this one i started it today um i picked this one because may May is uh, Asian American this Pacific Islander Heritage, heritage Month. Month. So such a mouthful it is. <laughs> um, and then no, we're not offensive. It's just a long one. It's we a need long to come one. up with an acronym, guys. Yeah, give us an acronym. But we're gonna celebrate it. Um, we we love it. We just need it to be shorter. <laughs> Then we are going to read on May 23rd, we're going to read this book, Legends and Lattes. I'm so excited about this one! Woo! Oh my Travis god, I'm Rogers. so excited about this one! So this is a book that is burning up the book talk in the bookstagram, Legends and Lattes. And we've been fooled by bookstagram before. I know, if they fuck me over. But this one is like... You guys on TikTok... Ooh, you're gonna get an earful. But this is like D and D, and they're lesbians, and, and I fucking I, love D and D. I fucking love and you love lesbians. D &D. So we'll see if we like this. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna close out the month of may with this book here well met by jen deluca which was actually a fan suggestion um well met by jen deluca it's also the first book in a series and this one takes place at a ren fest it's a love story at a ren fest so what's not also like? nerdy D, &D. we're it. just like rolling into the D, D stuff like what up i like what you did there a rolling in <laughs> okay well that's all i, I didn't have. do that on purpose <laughs> Just own it, Molly. <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad to be back. I'm so glad you're uh, back. For now. <laughs> Till the surgery. And then listen. It may be in, I may be in bed. Listen, if we have to take time off, Besties, we'll keep you informed. Otherwise, oh, we're absolutely not taking time off. I will film from bed. <laughs> I've already ordered a bed stand for my laptop. <laughs> we're still going. Okay. Okay. I was going to say we could also have people fill in, uh, but well, I mean, yeah, that's always an option too, but I, I actually think it'd be pretty fun to film an episode with you post-op where you're higher than a motherfucker and we try to talk about books. You know how I feel about taking narcotics. I'm asleep. <laughs> if I get those in my system, I am asleep. I'll be like, they Molly, literally Molly, Molly. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> all right. That's all, all I've right. got. I will see I'm you on good. Friday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of Molly and April, not those of anyone else. Today's book was The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins. Editing by Thomas Watkins. And music is Sleep Sweetly by Prigida. Don't forget to follow Book Besties on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. If you'd like to contact the Book Besties, please email us at bookbestiespod at gmail.com or visit our website, bookbestiespodcast.com. Until next time, besties, get lost in your favorite book.